Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Um, today we're going to be talking about the lesson number four of the thyroid beginner series. And today's topic is going to be centered around T3 or what I'm calling T3 basics. And this will include T3 the test, T3 the medication, and T3 the hormone. And this is similar but different from yesterday's lesson which was about T4 uh, because T3 is a lot different and I think it's probably the most important um, thyroid hormone that your body produces and one that is worth spending some time on. So let's kind of jump in here and I have an illustration here that we're going to be talking about in just a second here. Uh, but what is T3? So, so let's talk about T3 as a hormone first because that will help us understand the test and that will help us understand the medication. So T3 is the most powerful thyroid hormone that your body produces and that it, that it can create. It is It does all of the heavy lifting that when we think about uh, the effects of thyroid hormone, it all comes from T3. And so what do I mean? It is responsible for your hair growth, it's responsible for weight loss, it's responsible for increasing your metabolism, for increasing the kinetics and the way that your bowels move. For all of the, th the good things that we attribute to thyroid hormone, all those things come from T3. They don't come from T4, they come from T3. So that makes it the most powerful thyroid hormone in the body. Now, you're, how, do you, how do you get it in your body? Well, if you remember from yesterday's lesson, we talked about that from the thyroid gland, which is right here, so under the influence of TSH, TSH stimulates, remember thyroid stimulating hormone, stimulates the thyroid to produce two main hormones, T4, and 80% of the, the hormone that it produces is T4, but T4 is inactive, and that's where this 20% is right here. 20% um, is directly produced, or T3, 20% of the total thyroid hormone that is produced by your thyroid gland is T3. So your thyroid is producing T3 directly, but also T4 can be converted into T3. So it gets it in two separate ways there. And so that, that's sort of how your body is creating it normally. Now I want to draw your attention to one thing while we're talking about this, and that is how conventional doctors tend to replace thyroid hormone. So looking at this, we know that about 80% of the T4 or 80% of thyroid hormone that your body produces is T4 and 20% is T3. But how do doctors treat you when you have either your thyroid removed, so X out the thyroid, either destroyed by radioactive iodine, we can X it out again, or let's say your, your thyroid is damaged or not functioning properly from something like Hashimoto's. Well, what they do is they only supply you with this T4, but this isn't this, this approach fails to recognize the fact that your body is naturally producing that T3. And we'll get to this concept a little bit later. But this leads us all into T3 as a test. So we'll go to the next sort of page here. And so this is a standard test, and we'll talk about this just a little bit. So I think and, and I believe that T3 is probably the single most important lab test that you can use to assess thyroid function. I think it's more important than TSH, it's more important than T4, more important than reverse T3. I think you can get the most bang for your buck just by looking at two tests. Free T3, which we have outlined here, and then total T3. So remember, sometimes it's not, when you, when you look at your labs and you're wondering, well, did I get T3? Sometimes it's called T3, another name for that is triiodothyronine. So sometimes you might see triiodothyronine comma free something like that um, on your labs. And then for reverse T3 as well, they might do triiodothyronine comma reverse. So that's just their way of saying reverse T3. But if you see that term, triiodothyronine or T3, just realize they're talking about the same thing there, okay? And, but, but T3 uptake is a little bit different, but we won't talk about that right now. So you can get, there's two ways to really look at T3, just through standard blood tests. Insurance covers it, so you don't have to worry about that. You just ask your doctor, get me a T3, get me a total T3, super simple. Don't buy that insurance isn't going to cover it because they absolutely will. I've ordered it a thousand times and no one has ever had any issues getting it covered. So that, that can't possibly be the case. Uh, but anyway, so what T3 is telling you is how much uh, thyroid hormone is being, T3 specifically, is floating around in your serum. And what this can do is give you an idea of how much is being produced from the thyroid gland, but also how much your body is converting on its own, right? Because remember, there's two main ways to get it, directly from the thyroid gland or through that T4 to T3 conversion. So if you look at T3 and it's not optimal, then you know that something's wrong. You don't know exactly what it is, but you know that you should have more than, than, than what your body is capable of uh, producing or something needs to change with your medication. So we'll talk just briefly about the reference ranges here. And what you'll find is when you get a, a hormone, any hormone, you get a value, but then you get a reference range to compare it to. And what you'll find is a lot of people 
if they fall anywhere within this range, so 1.7 to 3.7, they'll be considered quote unquote normal. But that's not really a, a fair way to look at this. Um, the reason for that is you don't want to be compared to people uh, that are that are sick or that are older than you. You want to be compared to age match control. So if you are a, let's say, 40 year old woman, you want to be compared to a healthy 40 year old woman, not a sick 40 year old woman or a sick 80 year old or whatever it is, right? You want to be uh, generally in the healthy range. So when I look at T3, generally, if you're not on medication, that's usually the top 50% of the reference range or so. So if you look at this, this is about two here. And so you'd want to be um, above 2.7 to be sort of in that range. And so this would be considered a suboptimal range, not a, not a terribly low range, but a suboptimal range. Um, and then just a couple quick things here so we can talk about them. When you take medication T4 or T3, that's, this T3 should go up. So you'll see a change in both free T3 and total T3. They'll go up when you take thyroid medication. If that's not occurring, then there may be a problem with the dose of the medication or the type that you're taking. All right, so let's talk a little bit about T3 as a medication now, which kind of leads us into this next topic. So you can actually take T3 as a medicine. Most doctors only give T4, mostly because they're not comfortable with T3, but you can absolutely take it as a medicine. And it comes in a couple of different um, formulations. So first of all, liothyronine or Cytomel, those are the prescription names of the generic and the brand for T3. But you can also get it compounded into a slow, slow release or sustained release T3 version. And T3 is also in combination medications such as NDT or natural uh, desiccated thyroid hormone. Now, the difference between T4 and T3 is that when you take T3, it has a much shorter half-life uh, in the body compared to T4, which means you might need to take it a couple times per day um, or change the way that you take it. Uh, and that's just part of the way. It's just so much more potent than, than T4. And so it makes sense that your body would have a mechanism to get rid of it a little bit quicker, right? That just makes sense. Now, T3 as a medicine is also the most effective medication in terms of thyroid hormone for weight loss. And it's about three to four times more potent at than T4 at suppressing your TSH. So you need less of it uh, to get the same, same, uh, same effect on your body. So it's not like if you're taking 100 micrograms of T4, you need 100 mics of T3. That would be a massive dose. In fact, usually it's about, I would say, one quarter of the dose. But that's, don't, don't, that's not how you convert the medications, but just to give you an idea in terms of its potency. Now, the problem with T3 is it can be very, despite it being incredibly effective, it can be very difficult to get from your from conventional doctors, such as primary care providers or endocrinologists. Even though we have many studies, show like this one, which show that, even if you just replace T4 with T3, patients have much more weight loss, they feel better, and they, do, they, they, they just have a, a lot better quality of life by just switching medication and just assume, not even affecting the TSH, just keeping the TSH the same. And so these newer studies are coming out uh, with, with a higher frequency, more and more studies are coming out. And I think eventually you'll see that the standard of care will be to try and mimic this 80-20 this percentage here when it comes to thyroid management. So I think what you'll see is instead of, right now we're doing 100% T4 and 0% T3, that's just the standard. I think you'll see it switch to more of a, uh, attempting to mimic what the body does naturally, which is about 80% T4 and 20% T3. Now, I think that's a, that's a pretty decent goal to start with if you can get your physician to work with you because you may not get, have, you may not get them to switch your medication, but you might be able to get them to just add a little T3 on. So that might be the place that you start. But anyway, T3 is a great medication if used properly. So that concludes the basics about um, T3. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you, like always, if you have any questions, leave them below, but we're trying to keep this short and sweet. So uh, I'll see you at the next one.